we all know that your body makes testosterone, and from testosterone there are two metabolites, estradiol and dihydrotestosterone. But when would someone need to replace their dihydrotestosterone? We're going to find out after this, so keep watching. Hi, I'm Mike, the founder of Balance My Hormones, where we help men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, consider leaving comments and subscribing so you don't miss any content. So we're here today with Dr. George Tuliatos, an author, a TRT expert, TRT doctor, and we're going to discuss his experience with treating some patients with dihydrotestosterone. And we're going to ask now why and he would prescribe testosterone or dihydrotestosterone, which is the metabolite of testosterone to some patients. Hey, hi, George. How are you today? Hello, Michael. I'm fine. So why do some patients need exogenous dihydrotestosterone? Or I mean, maybe we should talk about what it is uh, a little more fully and what it does, and then maybe you can tell us why you would prescribe it. So testosterone is reduced through the 5 aerodictase enzyme to dehydrotestosterone, which is a more potent androgen, actually five times more androgenic than testosterone, that binds tightly to its HBG and can liberate more free testosterone. It has zero conversion to estrogen. And of course, we have the other metabolite of uh, the testosterone, which is estradiol, more of a, of a female hormone. Now, uh, when we block the one metabolite, then we increase the other. So if we take uh, and the estrogen, by blocking it too, we increase the HT. This is interesting. So uh, yeah. HT, what, what's the implementation of the HT? It has some anti-estrogenic activity. It can lower the puffiness. It does not resemble the aromatase inhibitor activity, but it has some anti-estrogenic activity. But also it can increase the free testosterone, which is the, the real testosterone, the, the one that works, the 2%, they're not bound. So there are people that come to my office, either they're taking testosterone or not, and the lack of sex drive. I check on the... the the blood profile, you know, the, the androgen panel. And we have a remarkable elevation of SHBG close to three digital. Now, in order to crush this and make free testosterone to work, we need uh, something like either elevated dose of testosterone or synthetic DHT, which is mesterolone, or either DHT itself. Now, DHT itself is a really expensive compound, hard to make, uh, bioidentical liposomal, very good absorption high concentration of 10% that is applied either down to the scrotum or to the wrist and forearms where we have thin skin. And it can make you feel great, not just mentally, but physically, because it works in the brain. It's antidepressive. It, impre it improves cognitive function, self-esteem, you know, and uh, you feel more recommend. And of course, it may lower the, the SHBG and liberate free testosterone without having the perhaps some effectiveness in, in effectiveness in, in the liver enzymes, you know, or in the lip is like mesterolone does, which is an, it's a steroid actually. But DHT doesn't have a massive impact on the muscle growth. It's more for the sexual and androgenic, well, sorry, more for the, wait, 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 more for the um, androgenic side of things. So go, go on. Let me... yeah. a more androgenic makes you look more grainy, more hard, more, less feminine, you know, drier and harder, but not bigger. So it can suck up of estrogens and look, you know, drier. Yes. What, what about acne? Lots of times uh, dihydrotestosterone is related to acne. Yes, it is related to acne, to hair thinning, prostate enlargement also, you know, sebu, uh, uh, oily skin. But I think it's up to the, to the balance, Michael, because I found what dose is appropriate for me. And I don't have acne for several months now. Of course, hair thinning is about genetic predisposition. Okay, and you clearly don't have ha you clearly don't have hair loss, um, and you've you've taken DHT and all these other substances. Yes, yes. Now, uh, sometimes uh, when you abuse mesterolone, for instance, and you go above the fifty milligrams, yes, you did you do a disruption in the balance of the androgens, and then perhaps uh, some you're breaking out with acne. You know, so you need to find the proper dose that works for you does not lead to acne or other side effects, you know. But it's a great libido enhancer, the DHT. And it can make you feel really, man, you know, very self-esteem, self, uh, you know, um, confident. But we're talking about this in light of 
also being on TRT. So you're taking testosterone, your body's uh, ar aromatizing or uh, reducing, to, aromatizing to estrogen, reducing to dihydrotestosterone. And, but sometimes that's just not enough. So uh, you, we're talking about adding the DHT to the testosterone. Some people still, even though on TRT, have elevated CBG out of liver inflammation, out of fasting, out of metformin use, out of T4 use. Those medications can elevate the CBG. And they don't have sex drive. So as Chrysler said, with the highest HBG, you need to increase your TRT dose. But what, what if your TRT dose is already high and leads to high estrogens or high hematocrit? Then you apply this agent that crushes HBG and liberates the free testosterone, you know. What about in some men, we talk about elevated estrogens affecting uh, prostate enlargement? Because we know that sometimes DHT is linked to... Yes. And, and uh, Hertog also said that People with BPH, or I'm not sure about prostate cancer, but people with BPH that want to diminish the size of the prostate, they're taking either finasteride or testosterone. And the first six months, we have a diminishing the size of the gland. But because you kill the DHT, the H2 elevate, that estrogens are responsible for the proliferation of the cells. And then suddenly, the opposite appears, you know? So, so as you take on the androgens, you need to control also the estrogens that will elevate out of this. Because you block the one metabolite, the other one will increase. You need to have it steady, it's a balance, you know? Okay. Similarly, when you take aromatase inhibitor, you look more grainy. Not only because you cut off estrogens, but because you elevate the DHT that makes you look harder, because, you know? But these tests are a bit more difficult, take a little bit more time to get the results. DHT isn't something that is on, a, on the standard test. Yes, and very expensive, yes. But also, we need to clarify that it's different to measure the DHT that circulates in the blood to the intraprostatic DHT, you know? I think that what matters with the BPH is the, is the intraprostatic DHT and not the one that is circulating through the reduction of testosterone. So the higher level of interprostatic DHT. Yeah, it matter. We need to measure the interprostatic DHT. How do you do that? Well, by, by biopsy, you just uh, I think you you just walk uh, look at the, the tissue, you know, the cells, the, the histology. But I don't think that it's so reliable to see. Oh, I have an elevated DHT. Should I get DHT? Yeah, I don't think most men are going to want to go through that. I think perhaps this has to do with acne or hair thinning, but not with the prostate itself. So, I mean, we know there's a prescription, uh, well, uh, commercially available DHT available in, in a gel. I think it comes out of Belgium, but there really aren't many other DHT products available either for injection uh, or, or even other creams. So it's just one of those tools that I think have been missing in, in TRT. Now, now, there are downsides to, uh, I think, DHT as well from some studies I've we shouldn't blame DHT or testosterone for the prostate cancer, but it's, as I said before, it's the lack of control in estrogens that will dominate, okay, that cause the increase of the... This study on dihydrotestosterone therapy only. They said, what would happen if we give men just dihydrotestosterone therapy only? Uh, once they were all down to nothing, they replaced it with DHT, but not testosterone. And what they found... One of the big notices, uh, things I noticed was they found an increase in ab uh, abdominal body fat when they were only given DHT. Yeah, and, and, and oh, I bet that the DHT cannot replace testosterone. No, and that's what they that, that's what they concluded. Not to mention, you're not getting the estradiol for the healthy bone. Uh, bone yes, growth. exactly for the cardiovascular. Yes. And the cardiovascular. That's why testosterone is the best compound for replacement therapy, not dandrolone, not trembolone, and whatever. <laughs> crazy they say because it has the perfect ratio one to one anabolic and anogenic but also it it produces estrogens where they are healthy the point is to control every hormone it's a dial and the hd also you know so we need estrogens that are aromatized through testosterone for the cardiovascular yes so as i said it sounds like whilst the hd is good in certain cases um, that it probably wouldn't be ideal all by itself because if that were the case, men would only do DHT, but they'd be missing out. And we have seen patients who don't produce enough estradiol on their own, even with testosterone supplementation. So if you don't have the, the balance between the uh, testosterone, estradiol, and DHT, you know, a man's not going to feel I ideal. And they're not going to get all the health benefits that they're meant to get from hormone replacement. Is that what you think? The same, 
There are some people uh, that live in uh, out in Caribbean. I'm not sure Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, that they lack of high failure education enzyme, and they are hairless. No hair in the, in the same way, and the lack of DHT totally. You know, and they don't look manly. Yeah, there are there are some people who lack the even the androgen receptor. So if they're not, you know, even though the testosterone could be high, they're not getting, um, or even the five alpha, five alpha reductase enzyme. You're right; they don't produce enough DHT. So. Oh, that's interesting. So we just wanted to share this topic. It was requested by one of our viewers on YouTube. Her talk initially said before he started using testosterone in his theories, he wanted to try something alternative. So, so he started using mesterolone. But he said even proviron is not enough to replace and do the job of testosterone. Personally, I'm suggesting proviron, DHT, and DHCA to people that are not into replacement therapy but they have low sex drive out of elevated SHBG. So I'm giving, them, I'm, I'm giving them these three androgens to improve the symptoms. Now, if it doesn't work, then of course the next step is to give testosterone. But those three androgens can improve the symptoms, you know, out of uh, the lack of sex drive through elevation of free testosterone. But certainly nothing beats testosterone. Of course, that's the idea. So I think, I think that um, finishes our, our, our short segment. Again, thanks for uh, one of our viewers for uh, requesting this video on, um, tell, they asked if we can talk more about the DHT uh, cream. And, uh, and that's, I think, what we've done. Hopefully we've answered all the questions. If you've got comments about DHT cream or anything related to TRT, please feel free to leave your comments below. And we look forward to speaking with you uh, next time. And uh, again, don't forget to subscribe. And thanks, thanks George, we'll uh, see you soon.